as the target will invariably slow down the bullet by some amount, that amount is converted to foot-pounds and considered to be the amount of energy deposited in the target. Of course, if a bullet does not penetrate through a target, if it stays inside, then the energy transfer is considered to be 100%. And conversely, if the bullet passes through the target and loses only some of its velocity, then the energy deposit will be a smaller number, like 5 to 20%. And such a bullet will be considered by the energy deposit proponents to be relatively worthless. What makes this approach seriously wrong is that it ignores the really important thing. What happened to the tissue, the organs, and the vessels inside the target? Did the worthless bullet, the one which passed right through the target and kept going, did it completely penetrate and destroy the heart and sever the aorta on its way through? Did the super duper 100% energy deposit bullet staying inside the body only hit and deform on a hard bone or thick muscle and end up virtually on the surface? These are the important factors to consider, not the energy deposited. Now here's an example of a 100% effective kinetic energy deposit bullet. You're looking at the head x-ray of a gang member who was shot execution style at close range by a rival gang. He was shot twice. The first bullet, the 100% energy deposit one, flattened out and did not penetrate the skull. It lodged in the scalp. The victim was not knocked unconscious or even seriously injured by this bullet. He only reacted by saying, ow, which prompted the shooter to fire again, but this time into his temple, inflicting a fatal wound. Now, this is the first bullet, which deformed and flattened against the skull, a 100% deposit of kinetic energy. Now, if this bullet, which penetrated his temple, and went into his brain and killed a man, had gone through and come out the other side of his head, it'd be considered a worthless bullet. This bullet would be considered 100% effective in kinetic energy terms, and this bullet, had it penetrated all the way through, would be considered relatively worthless. As a final example of the invalidity of this theory, let me show you a projectile which has much less energy than even a 22 short, yet it is devastatingly effective in wounding. This is a broadhead arrow. It has four razor-tipped sides, which are designed to cut, to slice their way through tissue. Did you know that African elephants have been killed with just one arrow like this? Which would you rather be hit with, this high-energy bullet or this very low-energy projectile? So much for the kinetic energy deposit theory. Kinetic energy is not an important factor in bullet effectiveness. Kinetic energy doesn't destroy tissue. Bullets themselves do, just the way a sharp stick or a spear does by puncturing, crushing, or tearing mechanisms. Now, there are some other myths about wound ballistics which should be cleared up, especially the concepts of knockdown power, stopping power, and shocking power. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret about these three terms. They don't mean anything. They are very popular terms used to describe events which do not occur. Now, I know that many of you who have been around firearms for a long time will have a lot of trouble accepting this. It was hard for me, too. But stopping, shocking, and knockdown power are hollow and meaningless terms. Let's start with shocking power. This usually refers to a bullet's ability to create a large temporary cavity or to create a big splash from a can of pop or a jug of water as I have been guilty of before I mended my ways. But by now, I think you understand the relative insignificance of temporary cavities and spectacular splashes. Shocking power is usually further used to describe a bullet's potential for creating a horribly painful wound, which some believe will cause a person to faint or become paralyzed with intense, unbearable pain. Neurological shock, some call it. Well. It may sound plausible until you realize a well-known phenomena. Virtually everyone who has ever been shot and lived to tell about it, and there may be some of you out there, report that they felt no pain at the time. Now, remember the FBI shootout? Well, let me read you some of the statements by the agents who were shot by a 223 bullet from less than 30 feet. One who was hit in the arm with a bone damage said that he felt a blunt impact, not a sharp pain. He continued to return fire. Another who had been shooting from behind a car said, my hand was knocked back, and I looked at my hand just briefly and saw that there was a large amount of blood coming from my hand, 
and the flesh had been knocked back and it looked like part of my knuckle had been blown away. But I didn't really feel any particular pain. I only glanced at it for a split second and I put it back down and fired the two remaining shots. Now this agent took a 223 bullet in his hand from very close range. It tore off a piece of his knuckle, but he felt no pain. Now just imagine what it would feel like to hit your knuckle with a hammer or, or close a door on your hand. The little incidents usually cause intense pain, but the big ones, the serious injuries, don't seem to cause any. Many people in other serious accidents report the same thing. No pain at the time. An hour or so later, yes, but not when it happened. If you go to a large university library, you can find the journals of a French combat surgeon, Baron Larry, who in the 1800s at times performed as many as several hundred amputations in one day without anesthetic. Now, he reported that the wounded soldiers would feel no pain for about an hour after being shot and that they would not react when having their arms and legs sawed off. In my research on this subject, I found an article written by Dr. Patrick D. Wall, a neurological specialist with the Cerebral Functions Group of the University College in London. Uh, Dr. Wall is one of the world's experts on pain. And in one research project, he interviewed Israeli soldiers who had had their arms or legs blown off on the battlefield. He writes, we asked about their initial reactions. The majority spoke of their initial injury as painless and used neutral terms such as bang, thump, blow, etc., to describe their first feeling and often volunteer their surprise that it did not hurt. Now, a very interesting and pertinent point is further made by Dr. Wall when he concluded that in the immediate phase of severe injury, like right after someone is shot, the two highest priority behaviors are fighting and escaping. He wrote, injured men, like injured animals, may be more than normally aggressive. Another researcher, Dr. Ronald Melzack at McGill University in Canada, did a study on the relationship between pain and injury and found that many people with severe traumatic injuries reported feeling no pain. He stated that while he did not understand the mechanism, it is clear that they may have a survival value. A limit on pain after injury would prevent an organism from being overwhelmed by pain and therefore allow it to carry out adaptive behavior, such as hiding, playing possum, and so forth. A shocking power is another term you should drop from your vocabulary and ignore it when you hear or read it. Stopping power is more difficult to criticize because it is so often used to mean a wide variety of things. The term is frequently used interchangeably with shocking power, but often it refers to the perceived power of a large, heavy bullet fired from a large caliber gun like a 44 Magnum. Well, let me show you what is perhaps the largest, heaviest projectile I have ever heard of anyone receiving. This projectile weighs just under three pounds, is about two inches in diameter, 12 inches long. A man was struck by this thing from virtually point blank range. Now, how do you stopping power fans like this as a bullet? Wouldn't this have the ultimate in stopping power? Well, this is actually a replica of the real projectile, which was a 50 caliber bolt from a bolt action rifle. Through a freak accident, the round went off prematurely before the bolt was locked closed, and it caused the bolt to be shot backward into the groin of a shooter. The bolt handle was sheared off. The bolt entered the man's groin area like this and came out, went all the way through his body, and came out the top of his buttock like that. It hit a truck and buried itself into dirt. Here we have perhaps the ultimate stopping power big heavy bullet. But what did it do to the man? Well, of course, it, it made a huge hole in both sides of his body and caused serious internal injuries. But the man did survive, and after a few weeks in the hospital, he has returned to his normal activities, which uh, still include shooting. But the key points in this story are that when I asked him, when I interviewed him on this, what it felt like at the time, he said, quote, I didn't really feel anything. I didn't know I'd been hit until about 10 seconds later when I knew something was wrong. 
and he was not knocked down and he remained fully conscious. Had the situation called for it, he told me, quote, I was fully capable of returning fire. Now, if this bullet, or whatever you want to call it, won't knock you down, won't knock you unconscious, uh, and won't cause any pain, um, what would? Any more questions about stopping power? Now, the last mythical term to discuss is knockdown power. Well, the truth about this is very simple. Bullets do not knock people down. Forget all that stuff you've heard about certain bullets hitting someone with small fingers, spinning them around and knocking them flat, or bullets which will lift a man off his feet and throw him backwards several feet or yards, depending on who's telling the story. And be sure to dismiss all the nonsense you see in the movies and on TV in scenes like this. <laughs> 